Hello, how are you doing? I hope you are doing well. So today, Paul's question, my question from what Paul's going to say in 2 Corinthians 9 is, what does God love? He loves a lot of things, but there's one thing in particular Paul's going to focus on today. So let's check it out. So let me start, though, by saying hello. Ndewa, baoni, hola, privi, ni hao, kamusta, anyahaseo. Blessings to you all around the globe today, and welcome to Dr. Barry Daily. So let's get into 2 Corinthians 9 to see what is this one particular thing. God loves a lot of things, but he loves this one thing. What is it? Say hi in the comments. Let me know where literally in the world that you are and how you are doing. I am in Eugene, Oregon, and uh, there's a lot of smoke in the air, but thank God a west wind is starting to blow, which is helping with the wildfire. So pray for rain for the west coast of the United States, really. And on that note, let's pray. Let's invite the Holy Spirit's peace and presence. I could use a bit of that today. How about you? And then let's ask God to speak directly to us through his scripture. Amen? Let's do it. Lord God, I thank you so much for this one joining right now. I pray that in the midst of the chaos of life, the hurt of life, the joys of life, the distractions of life, I pray that you would be right here with us right now. I pray, Lord, that you would create a sacred space around this one listening. Clear away the negative thoughts, clear away the worries of the world, and help us to hear from you. Put your peace around this one right now. Lord God, I pray for this one listening that you would open their eyes, open their ears, open their minds, open their spirit, open their body to your word. Have a special message from your word today for this one listening. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I hope you are having a good day today. And let's get to the word, right? That's where the healing is. That's where the hope is. Let's do it. Paul says to the Corinthians, remember, this is his second letter to them, and they've been having some relationship problems. And what he's talking about is in Jerusalem, there's a group that is very poor, and it's basically the core leaders of the church, and they've given everything to serve Christ, and they need some help. And so as Paul goes around, and pardon me if I cough, <coughs> it's from the bad air. What can you do? But I'm here. Uh, because as he travels around, there are other Christians in other places that aren't having such a hard time. Though he said the Macedonian church was very poor, literally impoverished, and they gave out of their literal poverty, they still found ways to financially give to help those in Jerusalem. But now he's going to Corinth and Corinth's got a bunch of money. And he's like, hey, so in chapter eight, remember, he's like, hey, I, you said you were gonna give some money. Uh, we're hoping you can still help out. And so this is interesting, right? Because no one likes to talk about money or they shouldn't like to talk about money. That's an awkward thing at church, right? Because so many people abuse it and this is a healthy way. This is the what God is looking for. Uh, and so if you've been abused by a church where they have asked you for money in a way that was unhealthy, I'm going to pray for God's healing over you in that. And uh, right now, though, I am going to read what Paul says, and then we're going to pray a blessing at the end. We're going to pray God's healing over you if you've been in a bad church situation. We're also going to pray, pray God's provision for you, and then God would open your heart and your ability to be generous in whatever way he is calling you. Are you ready? Here we go. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse one. Paul says, there is no need for me to write to you about this service to the Lord's people. Look, for I know your eagerness to help. And I have been boasting about it to the Macedonians, telling them that since last year, you and Achaia were ready to give and your enthusiasm has stirred most of them to action. But look, I'm sending the brothers in order that our boasting about you in this matter should not prove hollow, but that you may actually be ready, as I said you would be. For if any Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared, we, not to say anything about you, we'd be embarrassed. We'd be ashamed of having been so confident. So I just thought it was necessary to urge the brothers to visit you in advance, give you a heads up, and finish the arrangement for the generous gift that you had promised then it will truly actually be a generous gift and not one grudgingly given. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you've declared in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, 
For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able, God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, quote, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Now, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Remember, righteousness, rightness before God. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but it's also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the good news of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, Their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. The word of the Lord. Amen. That's good stuff. And so what was the thing that Paul says God loves in the comments? Can you tell me? And let me say good afternoon. Aloha. Good afternoon. Good day. Good evening to Terry and Michelle and Beverly. And anyone else watching right now, say hi in there. Say hi in the comments. What is the good gift? What is the... (laughs) I just gave it away. Wait, I said it backwards. What is the thing God loves in his people that Paul talks about? Do you remember? From the very beginning, let's go. I guess not the very beginning. It's verse 6. So I'm going to start at verse 5 to move to verse 6. It says, so basically he's saying, hey, you promised to give some money. And they told the Macedonians you were going to do it. And they were so excited. They said, what can we give? And they gave out of their poverty. And you guys have a bunch of money. So I'm actually, (laughs) we're going to come visit. And I'm kind of hoping that you're ready to actually give that gift. That's what he's saying. Then he says, then it will be ready as a generous gift, not as one grudgingly given. And look at verse 6. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. I think this is so important. I think that people can be pressured to give. Pass the hat one more time. Like that upsets me a lot. Be pressured to give and... That's not a cheerful giver, right? Uh, and so I think that if if you can't give cheerfully, I think that you shouldn't. I think that you should give what you can give cheerfully. I think there's a measure of obedience. God calls us to give 10% of our income. But if you can't give it with joy, I think that's something you should work on in your heart. I would even say um, don't give it until you can give it with joy. That probably goes against what a lot of people would say because they want you to give the money. But I would say that's a heart problem. That's a trust problem. Give what you can give with joy, right? And build to that. Uh, I think that's important because, look, God loves a cheerful giver. And it says, then it will be ready as a generous give, not as one um, grudgingly given. I think it's really important. And I think it's important when we're talking about money. He says, whoever sows sparingly reaps sparingly. Whoever sows generously reaps generously. I think it's important to know that we're dealing with a real God and it's a real relationship and God's going to provide for you. If you sow into others generously, God's going to sow into you generously. It's kind of this principle that, you know, I don't know how to explain, but it works. God has always provided my needs, right? When I've been generous, God has helped me. I've never gone without, right? And because when I can give with joy, it doesn't feel like a pinch. I'm not like, oh man, I can't buy this and that because I sent that money to that. I'm like, ooh, I'm so excited to be a part of right? But that's a work of the heart and the work of the Holy Spirit. And sometimes when I do feel that pinch, I say, I I need to go to God and have my heart worked on. Anyone else feel that way? And But I think that being a cheerful giver, it's more than just money. I think this goes to more than money. Like what if they say to you, 
at uh, church, we need someone to come set up chairs. Can anybody come set up chairs? What is the attitude with which we serve? Because some jobs aren't nice. Can someone clean the bathrooms? Can someone set up the chairs? Can someone make huge amounts of food for everybody? And can somebody, right? What can, what have you been asked to do? And sometimes we do it with a cheerful heart and sometimes we don't. And I, I actually think it would be better to pass than to show up and be grumpy. I think it would be better to pass than show up and be negative or gossipy or, right? And if you're like, I have to go, then I think you need to spend time in prayer. I think I, I think I need to watch my attitude. And if it's negative, I need to go to God and ask for help. And that's what I want to say to you. Are you feeling negative today? Are you feeling despair? hopelessness, gossipy, nah, 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 nah. is that how you feel today? I want to pray healing over you. I want to pray healing over you so that you can give generously. Maybe within your family, even in your home, are you griping and nah, 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 nah. is this, right? That's not how you want to feel. And trust me, no one else wants to feel that either. But why are we that way? And I think there's a lot of stress right now. People have lost income. People are afraid. Uh, you've had loss. Maybe you're mourning. Maybe you're stuck inside, <laughs> not only from COVID, but this bad airs. Maybe you're somewhere else in the world and you are having whatever issues are happening around you in your world. Uprisings in Lebanon, whole port blew up, right? Uh, there are just many reasons to feel grumpy, sad, stressed. It's taking its toll on marriages. It's taking its toll on families. It's taking its toll on the economy, on your job. And it just might not be easy to be a cheerful giver right now. Maybe you have no money to give. Or maybe you're like, I only got this much left. What do you really want me to give more, God? Right? Or maybe it's not even about money. Maybe it's just like, right? What can you give of yourself? Can you pray cheerfully? Can you call and reach out cheerfully? Can you send... Um, an encouraging message cheerfully? Can you make food and deliver it to someone who's having a hard time cheerfully? I want to pray that you can. I want to pray for God to meet you in your point of need so that you can have the peace and joy of God, so that you can give abundantly and cheerfully. Amen? Let's pray. Let's just Let's get right to the praying. Uh, if you have a specific prayer request, please put it in the comments so that we can, the prayer team can pray and we can put it on our list and we can go for it, right? Let's go. Let's pray. Lord God, I come before you right now and I pray for this one listening. Lord, I pray about the stress. I pray about the anxiety. I pray about the fear. Father, I pray healing over this one listening right now. If their church or any church or minister or someone in the name of God has pushed them in a way that is unhealthy about finances, has pushed them in a way that's unhealthy about physical service, spiritual service, or maybe even just abused them, I pray healing. Reveal to them what was from man and from Satan and not from you. Show this one grace. Show this one healing. Set them free, Lord. Set them free from the fear. Set them free from the anxiety. Set them free from the false guilt. Set them free from shame. Father, I pray for this one listening right now. If the worries and stresses of the world have been mounting and they're getting a headache, they're feeling sick in their body, they're feeling sick in their stomach, they're feeling grumpy with people, I pray your peace. Help this one listening right now to have time to spend in prayer. Have this one listening right now to have the desire and ability to hear your word. Pray this one listening right now to have some Christian community, even right here in the comments, saying hi, praying for each other. Bless this one with your peace. I pray your peace over this one's mind, head, neck, shoulders, back, arms, down their spine, through their hips, through their legs, their knees, their feet. I pray healing and peace. I pray the peace that passes all understanding over this one listening right now. Reveal to this one in this peace that you love them, that you care for them, 
that you see them, that you have a plan for them, that you have a hope for them. Give this one the strength and the courage to hold on. Care for this one as a child, Father. Let them see that you are present. Father, I pray for this one's finances. Father, I pray a blessing. Father, stretch what money they have. Bring in new income. Bring provision. Give them the heart to receive a gift. Give them the heart to give a gift. I pray the blessing of cheerfulness over this one. Whatever you have to do in their mind and their heart and their body, for this one to have joy and to be able to give up service or give up finances cheerfully, to be able to bless their family with cheerfulness, Lord. I pray that blessing on this one today. May the blessing of joy fall on you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, I pray that God blesses you in every possible way. And what can I say? I'm so happy to be here with you today. And God willing, I will see you tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Again, if you have a prayer request, let us know. The prayer team will be praying and we will get it and look at it. Uh, on that note, have a wonderful day, friends. And I will. See, and if you're watching later, stick say hi in the comments. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.